I like my pores, said no one ever. That's right, big pores is the number one concern of the Dr. Sam skincare customer. And I would go as far to say is it's one of the biggest concerns for you guys too. And if we think about it, around 60% of us have combination skin, which means that we've got oil here and relatively normal or dry skin here. Now, where there is oil, there will be pores. So today's video is about digging into what makes pores look bigger, what can we do about it? And I'll also be answering some of your questions right in the middle. So the big question always is, what exactly is a pore? And the way I like to look at it is essentially it's a kind of funnel which connects the sebaceous gland which sits in your skin's dermis with the outside layer of the skin. So the opening onto the epidermis. So the opening is that little circle of darkness that you see at the end of that funnel that connects to the sebaceous gland. So what does that mean? Well, basically it's a conduit for oil to pass through the skin and onto the surface. So guess what happens whenever there is increased oil around puberty, you've got, right, your pores become bigger and more dilated and therefore more visible. And that's especially true of the T-zone. So increased oil is the first reason that pores become an issue. The second reason is different. So if you think about this tube, this funnel connecting onto the surface of the skin, it's basically a floppy thin tube that is surrounded by connective tissue, which is mainly collagen. So when collagen stores are high and levels are perky, your pores are gonna sit quite pertly upright, which will ensure that the opening is as narrow as it possibly can be, allowing for the oil passing through it. But when those collagen levels decrease as we are exposed to sun damage, perhaps through smoking, perhaps through hormonal changes around the menopause, those collagen levels go down and it allows that floppy end of the tube to lie more open. And that's when the pores become more visible as part of the aging process. So it means then when we're thinking about problematic pores, we can kind of divide them up into two camps the oily group and the aging concerned group. That doesn't mean that there isn't necessarily some overlap, there always is, that's real life. But I think it does mean that there's a slightly different approach dependent on which camp you're in. So for the acne prone, we're looking at increased oil and we're also looking at sticky skin cells. So skin cells that line the inside of the pore, which will tend to attract each other and not smoothly exfoliate. And when they clump up, they form comedones. So they can be open, in which case they're little blackheads, or they can be closed, and then they're skin colored bumps. Either way, they can form the precursor lesion to an acne blemish a few weeks downstream once the bacteria start to collect in that oily, blocked off environment under the surface of the skin. And that's what triggers inflammation, a voila, a papule, a pustule, a nodular cyst. But basically everything starts off life as a comedone. So that's why the pores are such a fundamental part of how we go about tackling acne because by unclogging the pores, you get ahead of the acne lesions. So some people, it's more predominantly a clogging oil matter. For others, it's about the skin cells. But either way, attempting to tackle both is what gives you results when it comes to treating acne. So we're thinking about clogged up skin cells. We're thinking about excess oil. That really lends itself then to how we go about tackling visible pores in context of acne prone skin. So. First off, you've got to start with your basics, right? You know me. Um, it's always about going back to the simple, easy basics that don't cause trouble. And in this instance, we're specifically looking for non-comedogenic skincare. So that means that your cleanser, your moisturizer, and your sunscreen won't tend to clog pores, which is going to obviously create debris inside that little opening and make them look more visible. And it also will contribute to the acne process by clogging up the pores, that causes the bacteria to have a party and the inflammation and so forth. So all in all, let's keep the pores clear. 
So in terms of the ingredients that we look to for this, I think of them in sort of a hierarchy based on the severity of what we're dealing with. So if you're someone who's just a little oily in the T zone and maybe some visible clogged blackheads um, around the nose or maybe on the chin, you might start off simply with the beta hydroxy acid. So typically that's salicylic acid, a percentage of one to 2%. Now you can find that quite easily nowadays in either a toner format, a leave-on gel format. I think Paula's Choice is a great place to look for BHA-based products. You may even get away with a salicylic acid-based cleanser. Now I'd only advocate that if you're someone who's naturally oily all over because otherwise they do tend to be a little bit drying on the cheeks and I would prefer that you approached your T-zone with a specific strategy for oil and pores if that's just where your problem areas lie. Now, if we're talking about pores in context of blemishes, particularly in adult women, where the blemishes will often be away from the T-zone, so on the kind of lower cheeks, maybe onto the neck, then we want to look at slightly different ingredients. I think that's where you want to start thinking about actually normalizing the way the skin cells tend to clog up and block your pores. And then you're going to need one of the transformation ingredients like retinoids, like niacinamide, like azelaic acid and bacuchiol, which will all tend to improve the way the skin cells in the pores exfoliate away. BHAs simply help remove them, which will have a refining effect, but it won't change the way your skin behaves in the future. Um, so I think if you're getting breakouts, you really want to think about putting in place a leave-on based regime and a retinoid should ideally be at the core of that. Now, if you're acne prone and super oily, then we're probably going to be looking at the possibility of exploring whether or not you're suitable for an oral medication to manage that because Topicals do not have much impact on oil production. And that's simply because sebaceous glands sit very low in the skin and they're hard to access with products in terms of the way they penetrate into our skin. So in my practice, the drugs I use are the oral contraceptive pill, spironolactone in adult women, um, and isotretinoin or racutane or accutane if you're in the US. So of course that needs to be done under specialist guidance, guys. but. It really is the only way to tackle excessive oiliness um, if using simple topicals like BHAs doesn't make a big impact on the appearance of your pores and you're really prone to oily skin. But again, that's a separate video topic. Um, do check out my video on spinal acne if that's a drug that's of interest to you. It's particularly useful in those with moderate to severe acne who are particularly oily um, uh, adult women. So splitting up out into the second group, the more aging concerned sun damage group where poor, poor size seems to be increasing as you age, um, then it's really about kind of reprioritizing those active ingredients because the number one active ingredient if your pores are enlarging as you age is sunscreen because you are not going to make any inroads on your collagen stores unless you're actually creating primary prevention in the first place. So you want to reduce the UVA, UVA impact on your skin by using daily sunscreen. And that's broad spectrum sunscreen. And I would go SPF 50 um, or above. So you want to be doing that first and foremost. The next thing you want to be doing is using a retinoid. There has to be a very good reason if you're poor concerned um, as part of the aging process not to use a retinoid. And I think that's the thing that will make the biggest difference as the most data around its ability to, to increase your collagen stores and to reduce the tendency of ongoing UV damage to break down the existing collagen stores. And I like to parcel retinoids up with niacinamide. They work really well together with kind of mutually beneficial mechanisms of action and it supports barrier function. So if your skin is becoming a little drier as you get older, that's really helpful too. Other ingredients to consider, vitamin C, a powerful antioxidant and bacuchiol, which is pretty much a doppelganger for retinoids in terms of how they act, but they're also suitable for use in daytime on like retinoids. So it means you can get that double effect by using bacuchiol in the morning and your retinoid at night. 
So those are the ingredients that I like to think about when I'm looking at someone who's worried about their pores enlarging as part of a sun damage um, process, rather than if we're thinking about somebody who's more acne prone and oily. So I thought it might be fun to make these videos a little bit more interactive. So I asked my Instagram audience, what are your biggest pore concerns? So here were some of the, the queries that I received. So a lady called Faye Stevens, thanks for your question, Faye says, can my stretched pores return to their original smaller size over time? Now it kind of depends. So if they are stretched because of relentless squeezing, and that's terribly, terribly common, I do worry that there'll be some distortion of the elastic tissue around the pore and that can cause them to end up permanently stretched. So the moral of the story here is if you've been a squeezer is to leave your pores alone and let your topicals do the work. I think extraction really doesn't ever pay. Much better to rely on the likes of a retinoid and azelaic acid based regime and there's a Hector in the frame. I'm sorry guys, they're very active today. So. I think it's unlikely, but I think the, the lesson here is to leave your pores be. They're not as big as you think they are. Move away from any magnifying mirrors and adopt skincare practices to, to tackle clogged up pores in the future. Next question comes from Bunu. Uh, thanks for your question, Bunu. Trying to decongest my pores without compromising the lipid barrier help? So I think this is a good question because all the actives I mentioned do have the potential for irritancy. And I think that that's where a really balanced routine comes in. So on the one hand, you might well want to use a retinoid at night, some azelaic in the morning, and maybe some niacinamide as well. So I think it really does come down to then choosing the right supportive non-comedogenic basics to allow you to build up to such a routine. And it's why I built the routine finder for the Dr. Sam's reigns actually, is to give you a structure so that you knew how to use active ingredients, but in a careful way that introduces them slowly so that you're not overdoing it at the beginning. And I created quite nourishing, supportive products that are non-clogging. And I think oftentimes if you're blemish prone or prone to clogged pores, you stay away from richer products because you're worried they'll make matters worse. But in fact, the right barrier repair ingredients, things like ceramides and niacinamide are actually your friend. So question number three comes from Kate Evelyn Burr and she asks what to do about blackheads on rosacea prone skin? This is a very good question. So rosacea prone skin that clogs up, you might well be acne prone too. I think that the winning ingredient here is azelaic acid and the good news is you can use it up to twice a day. And Azelaic acid in combination with niacinamide is definitely going to be powerful because it basically tackles both the rosacea tendency in your skin because it's really calming and anti-inflammatory, but will also help clear out your pores as well. So that alongside a really supportive, non-comedogenic basic skincare routine should really help. I hope those answers were helpful, guys. And if you like that feature, I will keep going with it in my future videos. So if you are blemish prone and poor clogged, do head over to my website to download some of my exclusive cheat sheets. Um, in particular, my acne solved um, content, which is only available once you sign up for our newsletter. I think you'll find that really helpful. And I think in terms of retinoid usage, at this time of year, some guidance might well be good for you, um, just in terms of getting used to a retinoid at this time of year where the skin can be quite dry. So do check out my retinoid mastery series um, after you've watched this video. So hopefully this has helped you see your pores, not as foes, but as friends, and to help you realize that the tools to manage them are within your grasp and are really simple and easy to implement. So make friends with your pores, throw away the magnifying mirror. It's all gonna be okay.